power and your glory. David had a spiritual experience in his wilderness. He survived the wilderness. And I want you to know today that we can make it too. We can survive the wilderness. We must not sentence ourselves to failure. The wilderness is not invincible. The wilderness can be subdued. The wilderness can be tamed. The wilderness can be defeated. You've got to search for God in your wilderness because his power and glory transcend the wilderness. God's power and God's glory are above and beyond any situation that you're in. There is no river that he can't cross, no mountain he can't climb, no devil he can't defeat, no situation he cannot solve. Uh, I, brothers and sisters, get this. If you don't get anything else, our place is not as important as his person. I think you ought to tell somebody that. Tell them your place is not as important as his person. It's not about the place you're in, but it's about who God is. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, God is has not relocated. He's omnipresent. David said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. No matter what situation you are in, God is there. It's not where you are, but it's Whose you are. Oh, I think you ought to tell somebody that too. Tell them it's not where you are. But it's whose you are. You can be in the valley. But know his victory. You can be in the storm. But know his strength. You can be in the wilderness. But know his wisdom. You can be in the desert. But know his divinity. You can be in the fire. And know his faithfulness. You can be in tribulation. And know his trustworthiness you can be in loneliness and still know his love you can be in mourning and know his mercy you can be in financial struggles but know his ability to supply your every need you can be in grief and still know his glory it's not where you are but it's whose you are David was in the wilderness but he knew that he belonged to God. And he says, oh God, you are my God. He does not focus on the place. He does not focus on the problem. He does not focus on the pain. His focus is on his God. And we must search for God in our wilderness. Notice in verse 1, David says, early will I seek you? But in verse 2 he says, I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Uh, you just missed your shout. David's experience in the sanctuary equipped him for the wilderness. I don't think y'all got me. You see, we come here so that we can get our energy. We can get our learning. We can experience God so that when the devil attacks us outside of this sanctuary, we've got enough God in us. We've got enough faith in us. We've got enough determination in us that the devil cannot defeat us. See, brothers and sisters, the church is the filling station. This is your gas station. This is where you get your unleaded. This is where you fill up on the glory of God. Where you fill up on the word of God. So when the devil attacks you on your job, you've got enough God. You've got enough faith uh, to make it through. Y'all sit down. I'm only on point number two. Second thing you got to do after you seek for God is you've got to be satisfied with God despite your circumstance. And how many in here can testify that I'm still satisfied with God? I'm broke, 
but I'm satisfied. My relationships are all messed up, but I'm satisfied with the Lord. My car has one wheel on it, but I'm satisfied. Come on, somebody. Ain't got no money in the bank, but I'm satisfied. Just got laid off my job, but I'm satisfied. My boss is crazy, but I'm satisfied. Look at uh, three verses three through five. He says, because your loving kindness is better than life. Ooh, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. I'm not going to praise you because of what I have, because of the situation I'm in, but I'm going to praise you just because of your loving kindness. Mm, I wish somebody would get that. Too. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. David's search for God led to satisfaction with God. He expressed a thirst and a longing for God. And once David recognized the power and the glory of God, he could be satisfied with the Lord. The love and kindness of the Lord is better than life. And we've got it backwards in the church because we have been programmed to praise God when we get something. We've been programmed to praise God for a new job, for a new car, for a raise on the job, for. But we've got to learn how to praise God because of He's God. From everlasting to everlasting. He, if I never get another blessing, he's still God. Come on, somebody. Where is the motor uh, that causes your heart to beat? Where's the flashlight that causes your eyes to see? If you got up this morning, if you got breath in your body, you've got a reason to, to praise God. I'm going to praise you. Love and kindness is the Hebrew term, uh, Lord have mercy, chest. It means steadfast love. It means acts of mercy and kindness. It means strength and fidelity. It's not a matter of obligation or law. It's a matter of devotion and affection. And although he's in the wilderness, he's relieved of the tension and the frustration of the wilderness because he knows that God still loves him, that God is still merciful, that God's strength is still there, that God still has his fidelity or his faithfulness. So despite my current circumstance, I can still praise God because although my circumstance has changed, I know God has not changed. And the same God that blessed me before can bless me in spite of my current circumstance. He, he, he's, he's there in the wilderness, but he's relieved that God is there. And he says, your love and kindness is better than life itself. In other words, I have no life without God. My life has no meaning without God. My life has no direction without God. Yeah, he's in the wilderness, but God's loving kindness continues to flow in his direction. And David must express his praise of and to God even in the wilderness. Uh, it may appear a little bit strange that he's there. Uh, he has every apparent reason to be sad, to be bitter, to be despondent, to be depressed, to be sorrowful. But we find just the opposite. He was thirsty and longing and now knows he'll be satisfied because of the Lord's goodness. It's this same day. 